Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck, Core Spirit Dancer a 2 mana 2 Core Wizard from Jumpstart, and Core Spirit Dancer gets plus 2 plus 2 for each aura attached to it, and whenever we cast an aura spell, we may draw a card. So the Spirit Dancer is a very powerful draw engine, and it also rewards us for putting a bunch of auras onto it. So this is definitely the centerpiece of the deck, and by keeping the curve nice and low, we also get to play with Lurus of the Dream Den as our companion. Lurus being a little bit shy today, but a definitely a powerful addition to the deck, letting us replay permanence with converted mana cost 2 or less from the graveyard in the late game. Of course, having to pay the 3 mana to put Lurus into our hand is pretty taxing, was a lot better before the change to the companion rule, but still definitely worth adding. And we're not giving up a whole lot by uh, playing Lurus as our companion. We could try to go into green and then potentially play an enchantment like Ancestral Mask at 3 mana, which of course also synergizes quite nicely in the deck. We get also access to Satessin Training as a trample enchantment that replaces itself, and we can also consider playing Season of Growth as another draw engine. So those are the three main cards I would include in a green build. But by going mono white, the mana base also becomes much more consistent, and it's easier to play a lower land count. Plus we get to play Lurus as our companion, so I think those are enough incentives to just stay mono-white, but you could easily experiment with a green-white build as well. So besides Core Spirit Dancer, the main payoff for the deck is All That Glitters, a 2-mana aura that gives the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact and or enchantment we control, so that can get out of hand pretty quickly once we get a few enchantments going. And to protect our Core Spirit Dancer, which is going to be wearing a whole bunch of auras, we've got both Alcid of Life's Bounty, which can give a creature or enchantment protection from the color of our choice until end of turn if we sacrifice it, as well as Selfless Savior, which we can sacrifice to give another creature indestructible until end of turn, so we can play the Alcid and the Selfless Savior on turn 1, and then on turn 2 maybe play the Spirit Dancer, and then on the following turns we'll be able to protect it, thanks to our 1-drops. So those all work nicely in the deck, and then of course most of the rest of the deck will be all enchantments to boost up our Core Spirit Dancer, which is going to be the primary target over enchantments, although you can also decide to just put all your enchantments on a different creature and keep the Core Spirit Dancer purely as a card draw engine, there are situations where that might be better. So let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our 1-drops, where besides the Alt-Sade, we've got 4 copies of Glaring Ages, 1 mana enchantment aura, when it enters the battlefield we can tap target creature and opponent controls, so we can get rid of a blocker for a turn, and then the enchanted creature gets plus 1 plus 3, adding a lot of toughness, which works nicely with one of our next cards, which is Solid Footing, 1 mana enchantment aura with flash, so we can play it at instant speed, maybe surprising the opponent, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1, and as long as the enchanted creature has vigilance, it also assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, so that works quite nicely with our glaring ages. And to give vigilance, we've got 8 enchantments total in the deck, one of them is Sentinel's Eyes, a 1 mana enchantment aura, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 and vigilance, and we can also escape it out of the graveyard by exiling 2 other cards from our graveyard as well, so a nice recursive enchantment. Then at 2 mana we've got our full playset of All That Glitters, definitely one of the major payoffs besides Core Spirit Dancer, full playset of Angelic Gift, 2 mana aura, giving the enchanted creature flying, and when it enters the battlefield we also get to draw a card, so it replaces itself. And then our next card was a pretty late addition, and I added it after the Goblin deck surged in popularity in Historic, and that is Hushbringer, a 2-mana 1-2 fairy with flying and lifelink. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. So this can stop a lot of the powerful goblins like Muxus from doing anything when they enter the battlefield, also stops Goblin Ringleader, so this is mainly a countermeasure to the goblins deck. You can also potentially replace Hushbringer with Honor Guard, which does the same thing pretty much, but is a 1-3 instead of a 1-2 flying lifelink, but of course lifelink, if you can put a bunch of enchantments on it, can be a nice keyword as well. Before adding Hushbringer, this used to be Transcendent Envoy, so if you don't care about fighting in the mana game and just want maximum synergy, then Transcendent Envoy is a nice way to discount or more expensive auras, and makes it much easier to go off once we have a Core Spirit Dancer in play, and it's also an enchantment creature, so it also counts for all that glitters. 
And then of course we've got our full playset of course Spirit Dancer. Always want to see this in our opening hand, but you can also keep hands where you have an all that glitters and a bunch of other cheap enchantments. And then we've got four copies of Sentinel's Mark, another enchantment with Flash that we can play at instant speed. And the enchanted creature gets plus one plus two and has Vigilance, so another way to enable our solid footing. And if we played Sentinel's Mark during our main phase, the enchanted creature also gains a lifelink until end of turn, which can be nice in a racing situation. And then the mana base is very straightforward, only 20 lands, or that can easily function with only 2 or 3 lands in play. So we've got 18 planes and 2 castle Ardenvale in case we do flood out. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand's pretty good, we've got the Spirit Dancer and all that glitters. No way to protect the Spirit Dancer and no 1 mana enchantments. So it could be a little bit clunky and weak to removal, but still gotta keep. And then one of our better draws could be a Selfless Savior to protect the Spirit Dancer. Facing a turn 1 Islands. And a renowned Weaponsmith, alright, so an Artifact Ramp deck. So I could attack and then Sentinel's Mark if they block to maybe surprise them. I think I just want Angelic Gifts in the hopes of finding a 1 mana play here. And there's a solid footing. Alright, can attack. And we've got a 5 7 flyer already. And next turn, this all that glitters could do quite a bit of damage. Opponent goes Mindstone into Mindstone, into Guild Globe. Definitely gonna start with all that glitters in case we draw another copy. And now that we have Solid Footing plus Vigilance, we should have Lethal. Easy peasy. Turn for win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand has the one creature, which is Selfless Savior. Don't have Core Spirit Dancer, don't have all that glitters. Yeah, this is gonna be a mulligan. This hand would have been okay if we had a creature, which we don't. So that's another mulligan. Now, the deck is definitely capable of winning on a few mulligans, just because Core Spirit Dancer can potentially draw out of it. Gonna have to keep this one, bottom at least one lands, and then probably the Sentinel's Mark, although I guess Mark plus Footing is kind of nice. It's just that Angelic Gift could draw us into more creatures in case the Alcid gets answered. Yeah, I guess we'll still just keep this. Turn one mountain, there's all that glitters. Alright. Probably just played all that glitters here. If they have a three damage effect, I wouldn't be able to stop it with a Sentinel's Mark. Alright, it is a Goblin's deck. So finding a Hushbringer would be nice. Opponents down to 9. They won't have an easy time removing the Alsade, but they could potentially go over the top with Muxus. Another Alsade. Alright, that puts them in Shumblock mode. Now I can't kill them, because if I give protection from reds, of course I uh, lose an enchantment for all that glitters. But having them chumping is still fine. And if we draw another enchantment next turn, we can kill him. 
And there's Krenko with haste. So that can make two goblins right away. Come on, enchantments. Selfless Savior doesn't quite do it. Probably just put Lurus in hand, which can eventually get back an Ulsate after we sacrifice it. Three, four... Yeah, they could Muxus me and kill me, but not much I can do about that. Although at 49 life, it's going to be pretty tough for them to one-hit KO me. They would have to get pretty lucky. Another War Chief instead. So even if they activate Krenko and have Jump Palm in hand, they still wouldn't be able to kill the Ulsaid here. So drawing a land doesn't necessarily do it, since playing Lurus and sacrificing Ulsaid still leaves us one mana short of replaying it. But drawing another enchantment definitely works. So that should do it here. Can play the Ulsaid, sacrifice it, naming reds, and we'll still have 9 unblockable damage coming through. Sweet, we beat goblins without the need for Hushbringer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Probably gonna have to mulligan this, or do I? We do have Aegis plus Solid Footing. We're putting all our eggs into the Selfless Savior basket here. And of course Vigilance also key with the Salt Footing, so we can be hitting pretty hard. I guess I'll try it. And hope they don't kill my savior. Turn one mountain. Uh-oh. And a Warlord's Fury. Alright, so... Some sort of Steamkin deck. And ooh, Spirit Dancer on turn two. That's a lucky draw. So we don't have to go all in on the savior just yet. A blue-red deck. Okay. Got savior to protect Spirit Dancer from any burn spells. It's gonna be a sprite dragon for now. And an I'll say the draw. So let's start with maybe Aegis, just to add as much toughness as possible. Yeah, sure. And we'll make that another Aegis, I think. And then next turn, Sentinel's Ice plus Solid Footing. It's gonna mean a lot of damage. I guess we can just Sentinel's Ice now. Maybe the second Aegis should have been Solid Footing or uh, Sentinel's Ice instead. But regardless, next turn we should be attacking for lethal. We've got a 15 Toughness Spirit Dancer, so they will need a Bounce Spell to get rid of it. But we still get to redraw a bunch of cards here with Salt Footing. I'll say it can name blue, we'll have protection from all their blockers. And that should wrap things up. Alright, sweet. There was another fast one thanks to Core Spirit Dancer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand has all the tools we need to win the game quickly, but it is risky. We don't have any way of protecting the Spirit Dancer, and if they do remove the Spirit Dancer, we don't have another creature. Drawing all say turn one is great. Probably not as good as Selfless Savior, but still happy to have it. 
opponent with a turn one watery grave into a thieves guild enforcer, so rogue stack. Mills us for two. And a Vantress Gargoyle, fair enough. Well, hopefully they can't remove Spirit Dancer here. If I had a third land, I could maybe wait on playing Spirit Dancer until I can play it and then protect it with Alsaid, but since we don't, I just have to go for it here. All right, we've got protection up with Alsaid. Definitely gonna try and keep up one mana each turn. Better to go double Sentinel's Eyes this turn as opposed to all that glitters. Now we do have to watch out for Death Touch on the Enforcer, potentially. But we can always intervene with Alsaid. Another Spirit Dancer is great to have. Get in for six. Opponent takes it. Mills another Sentinel's Eyes, which we can escape, making it more difficult for the opponent to have the required number of cards in our graveyard. All right. So I don't hate play another Spirit Dancer and then escape the Sentinel's Eyes. So I should pretty easily be able to kill the opponent next turn. Opponent jumps. Can always decide to play the salt footing end of turn if our opponent taps out. Another Gargoyle. These are blue despite being artifacts, so naming blue with Alsaid is a way to get past them. Although then we gotta watch out for a black removal spell. So I'll just untap here. And then Aegis can tap one of them down. We'll start diversifying a little bit. Another Aegis should do it too. All right, and our opponent scoops it up. Of course, Spirit Dancer is quite a card. Surprised I haven't seen more people playing with it. All right, we're on the draw. No creature equals no keep. Well, here we are again. Well, hopefully our next hand's got a Spirit Dancer in it. Well, there we go. So two lands, and then I think I gotta get rid of the Hushbringer here. And hope they can't kill the Spirit Dancer. Facing the Teamer Triome. Breeding Pool, so this is probably Gross Spiral. Teamer Reclamation has also been making a resurgence in Historic now. So that's potentially what we're up against. If the Spirit Dancer survives, I think I'll go all Sight plus Solid Footing. Alright, opponents on Elementals instead, so that does change my approach to the matchup. Risen Reef also got a fun new toy in the 5-man uh, enchantment that makes 2 to Elementals when they play a land. Might feature that one in a future video as well. So, what am I doing here? Probably just Gift and Footing. I'll start with the footing, in case we find some other cheaper, more powerful enchantments. 
not really afraid of any removal spell, at least not at this stage. Maybe later an Omnath could do some damage. Not a Risen Reef. Alright, Pono's got double Reef in play, that's kind of their preferred start. Alright, I see Thassa's Oracle, so they're definitely playing the combo version with the 5 man enchantment I was talking about. That tries to essentially draw its entire deck and then win with Thassa's Oracle. The build I have of this deck doesn't involve Oracle, we just try and win the game by making all our elementals hasty with uh, the uh, Scampering Scorcher. So we'll play another Gift for now. Would love to find a Vigilance enchantment here to turn on the solid footing. Well, opponent's gonna kill me next turn. Which is not impossible. Let's see if they have the namesake enchantment here. Nope, not a reef. Well, Triple Reef is about as good as they can hope for. I guess they're missing some other cheap elementals to play afterwards. And a Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Which is gonna draw them a lot of cards with Triple Risen Reef in play, but yeah, it's not gonna kill me. And they should be dead to the Spirit Dancer next turn. So our opponent can have their fun. Alright, sweet. Even on a mulligan to 5, as long as we find a Spirit Dancer, we can still easily win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand would have been keepable with two lands, since we have the Altered Glitters, a bunch of cheap enchantments. But without a second land, this is a little awkward, since we don't actually have any 1-mana auras. So, yeah, I'll, I'll mulligan. Mulliganing also doesn't feel too bad when we don't have a Core Spirit Dancer in hand. This one I'll begrudgingly keep, since we do have Salt Footing plus Vigilance, but uh, definitely not the best hand. Opponent on a Tempered Steel deck, a blue-white variant. So this is going to be a pure race, so the lifelink on Hushbringer is nice. But if they have a turn to seal Overseer, we're probably still in trouble. It's gonna be a Stone Coil for two instead. Alright, so next turn we could expect Tempered Steel to hit the battlefield, which is definitely gonna hurt. But we do have the tools to maybe outrace it. Alright, there's a Steel Overseer, so they must have drawn it this turn. Maybe they're missing land for Tempered Steel. So I can go Sentinel Size, Aegis, and Solid Footing here. Hit them for 7. And next turn I can make that 10 damage potentially. Oof, glass caskets. Don't see that one in every Tempered Steel deck, but incredibly effective here. Oh, well, we've got another creature, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough to win this one now. Anything fancy I can do with the Sentinel's Mark? 
probably just escape the sentinel's eyes. Pass a turn. Another glass casket, jeez. Alright. Can't even sacrifice this to put it in the graveyard for uh, escape purposes. And an all that glitters now. Alright, we should be super dead now. Yeah, exile based removal like Glass Casket is definitely a great answer to our deck since Selfless Savior doesn't protect against it. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand facing a Yorion deck. Could be Field of the Dead. In which case, we've got Angelic Gift to fly over, so we should be good. Steam Vents is not a great sign, but uh, still gonna play the Spirit Dancer here. Aha, uh -huh, so maybe it's an Elementals deck, Lava Coil. It's unfortunate. Probably go Salt Footing end of turn if they don't kill the Hushbringer. Opponent puts Yorion in hand. Well, maybe this is a game where we end up playing Lurus, who knows. Also, the Spirit Dancer did get exiled. So we'll Angelic Gifts, and then probably end up playing the Aegis anyway. So 6 Toughness should be safe from most burn spells. And then next turn we can give it Vigilance. Alright, Questing Beasts. That's okay. Well, I guess we're all in here. Nothing subtle about it. Although I guess we don't speed up the clock by playing another Salt Footing. So I guess we can keep the last one in hand. Cavalier of Thorns can block my Hushbringer. But no ETB effects. And we can put Lurus in hand now. Well, despite losing the Spirit Dancer on turn 2, it's still looking good here. Also no returning cards from the graveyard because of Hushbringer. And our opponent explodes, sweet. And we still had Lurus as a late game plan in case it did somehow answer the Hushbringer. But this also goes to show us that burn spells have a pretty fast expiration date against our deck since we can quickly get our creature to a lot of toughness. So you really need access to those Asper colored removal spells instead. And even then we've got a bit of protection with the Selfless Savior and Allsade. So overall I've been very impressed by this Mono White Auras deck. Of course the draws with Core Spirit Dancer are gonna look a lot better than draws without it. So definitely don't be afraid to mulligan if you don't have a great hand since our deck is capable of winning on a mulligan to 5 as well. Your games tend to be over pretty quickly, you don't have too many decisions to make, so this also seems like a fine deck to rank up with on ladder. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.